Hello everyone, this is our Cisco Packet Tracer getting started walkthrough video. In this video, we're going to go through a couple different menus within Packet Tracer, including toolbars and building your first network. So let's get started. Bottom left corner of Packet Tracer, we have different categories that exist. We have network devices, and when you click on network devices, below you'll have different subcategories. We have routers and switches, we have hubs, wireless devices, security devices, and even WAN emulation for wide area networks. Now, we have a different main category though, where we can go from network devices and change to end devices. When we click on end devices, we're gonna see a lot of different subcategories. Within them, we're gonna have the end devices with machines. We're gonna have home, which includes IoT, Internet of Things devices. We'll also have smart city, which is more on the city-wide style of devices. We'll have industrial for industrial equipment. And we even have a subcategory for power grid. This is awesome. All these being different types of devices we can interconnect within Cisco Packet Tracer. Besides network devices and end devices, we can even go further and we can click on components. Inside of components, we'll have a subcategory of boards. We'll have a category for actuators and even sensors. All these individual items which can be included to make it an amazing Internet of Things packet tracer. Going further, we can go ahead and click on connections. The connections category is where we're going to find a lot of cool ways you can interconnect your devices. Even more than the connections menu, we can go ahead and we can click on miscellaneous. In miscellaneous, we'll find some pre-built network devices and end devices that have items installed on them. Lastly, we have another main category, and that's going to be multi-user. And multi-user gives you the ability to interconnect multiple packet tracers on a real live network to build larger packet tracer topologies. It is cool. Outside of the menu in the bottom left corner, we're going to go up to the top left we'll find a toolbar. With this toolbar, what we're going to be able to do is use a select button to select devices, including drag and drop or point and click. We we'll have a magnifying glass that we can use to inspect devices. Inspect allows us to see basic information regarding a device that we can click on with a magnifying glass. If we come to the point where we feel that we want to get rid of and delete a device, which we'll do later on, we can use the delete button. Besides those, we can always resize, and resize allows us to resize little graphics. We'll take a look at putting a graphic in in just a little bit. We can document our topology by using the place note. I can click on the notepad icon and place a note anywhere in my topology and say that it's a connection for a specific PC, or maybe it has an IP address or just the device name. Besides using the note icon, we're also able to draw lines. We can draw shapes as well as we can even do free form. There's many options here to help us organize our networks. This comes in handy when you have a lot of devices deployed and you want to categorize them or make it easy to read the topology. Outside of those items, we have the ability to send network data utilizing what's called PDUs. We'll use these in upcoming videos. So what we want to do next is we want to actually get some equipment inside of our network topology. So I'm going to click here in the top left corner, which is my select button. And then I'm going to go ahead and get myself a wireless router. The wireless router will be under the main network device category, followed by wireless. Inside of wireless, I'll see a couple devices here, and I'm going to choose the home router. I'll click on the home router, click on my topology, and now I have the home router in my logical workspace. Now we need some devices that will connect to the home router. So I'm going to go ahead and click on my end device main category, and I'm going to grab a laptop. When I click on the laptop, I will then click on my logical workspace, and now I have purchased a laptop. I would also like to make this a little more equivalent to a normal home environment, so I'm going to click on a desktop PC, and I'll put that desktop PC on my logical workspace. Now, none of these devices are automatically connected to the wireless router. Let's bring out another device. We're going to grab a smart device, equivalent of a smartphone. I'll click on that in my end device category, and I'll also click on my logical workspace. So this time we have a desktop PC, a smartphone that just connected to wireless, and a laptop. Let's get the PC plugged into that wireless router. In order to do this, we're going to go ahead and click on the connections menu right here. 
When you click on connections, I'm going to grab the third cable. It's the copper straight through. I'll click on the copper straight through. I'll select my PC. And this is going to plug into the fast Ethernet port, the network jack. When I click on the fast Ethernet, I will then click on the wireless router. And I have four Ethernet choices to plug this network cable in. I'll just choose the first one, Gigabit Ethernet 1. That PC is now cabled and will have a network connection coming online. The laptop, though, is commonly used as a wireless device nowadays, so I'd like to get that laptop online using Wi-Fi, just like the smartphone. To do this, I can click on the laptop, and it's going to physically load up the laptop. You'll see here we're on the physical tab. A picture of the laptop is shown here on the right. I can click the zoom in button, scroll down, and we can see the laptop. It has a power button as well as some ports on it. I can power off the laptop and I can take this wired network port right here and I can select it by left clicking, drag it, and drop it on this list. This list is actually different network cards as well as accessories and peripherals I can install on my laptop. I want this laptop to use a wireless network card. There's a couple different ones. If I click on the first card in this list, WPC300N, you'll see a description down below of what that card is. This offers 2.4 gigahertz wireless. I want it. So I'm going to click and drag on that card name and I'm going to release it on my slot on the side of the laptop. After I've installed that card by dragging and dropping it on that open slot, I will power on my laptop again. And now my laptop's going to boot up and connect to that wireless network. So we've successfully built our packet tracer network. Now what if we didn't want one of these devices? Maybe we didn't want the smartphone. I can go to that toolbar we discussed earlier and click on the delete button. And then I can delete that smartphone by clicking on it. And now it's gone. Now let's say I screwed up. What I can do is I can fix it. I'm gonna bring that smartphone back into play. The top toolbar has a couple features up here. We have undo, we have redo buttons, we have copy, we have paste. These four come in handy. If I accidentally delete that smartphone, I can undo it by clicking the undo button and it brings that smartphone back. If I did successfully recycle that phone, I can always click redo and make it go away again. I get the pop-up, then I can click yes to get rid of that phone. Now the neat thing about Packet Tracer is you can use the copy and paste to copy and paste individual devices as well as configurations. I can copy an entire PC and paste it, which immediately copies that PC and anything configured on it. So at this time, it's best for you to start exploring. And if you make a mistake, don't worry. You have the undo button, which will bring that deleted smartphone, for example, right back to you. So have some fun with Cisco Packet Tracer. Explore the interface and start building your own custom networks.